I don't deserve to die because somebody miscommunicated or somebody took a guess at what's going on with my leg. I'm not supposed to die that way. I might be supposed to, you're not even supposed to take a chance. Brought up what was going on with him and because I had read through the lawsuit and it was just one of those things that was unavoidable because there was so much evidence. I mean, there was picture documentation, there was video documents. First call you and said that somebody is doing to them what the, alleg what the allegations are about you. Would you be okay with that? Let me tell you something, I'll be up in that mother everything up. It looks like R. Kelly just dropped some bombshells from behind bars, and if they're true, let's just say Oprah and Gail King might not be as innocent as they seem during those infamous interviews. Everything if your daughters up. came to you and said, look, this guy is doing to me what the allegations are against you. I, then I would have to arrest myself after I did what I had to do. Apparently, Kelly's calling out what he claims are Diddy's slaves, suggesting that the entertainment industry isn't as shiny and sweet as it seems. The lyrics and tales and the things that he has done, I think Diddy is about 20 times worse to me. So are Oprah and Gail just pawns in a bigger game of control and cover-ups? And if R. Kelly's telling the truth, who else in Hollywood is hiding skeletons? Let's find out. See, the word on the street is that their real motivation wasn't just to grill Kelly on his crimes. They allegedly had a whole different agenda. Why? To keep certain names out of the public eye. We're talking about heavyweights like Diddy and Jay-Z. Yeah, you heard that right. R. Kelly hints that these two media queens were working behind the scenes, not just to get justice, but to bury the connection between him and these power players before it could bubble up. Yes, today, R. Kelly hires Bill Cosby's lawyer in question for freedom. <laughs> so if Kelly's ties to Diddy got any messier, it might have unraveled a whole web of dirty secrets. And that's a problem for folks at the top. If this is true, then Oprah and Gail were playing a much bigger game than anyone realized, acting like gatekeepers for the elite to protect their own. We all remember Gail King's explosive interview with R. Kelly, the one that had him yelling, crying, and flailing his arms in front of millions. That interview became a media circus overnight, painting Kelly as a desperate man losing his grip on reality. But what if that viral moment wasn't just about holding him accountable? What if Gail and Oprah had a hidden agenda from the start? I am surprised that you agreed to do it. Why are you sitting down with us today? I'm very tired of all of the uh, lies. Now that Kelly's sitting behind bars, he's singing a different tune, claiming that the interview was all part of a much bigger game. According to him, Gail wasn't there just to expose his wrongdoings. She was working with powerful figures in the industry, helping them silence him before he could expose them. And here's where things get interesting. Kelly suggests that Oprah, Gail, and industry giants like Jay-Z and Diddy all had a vested interest in ensuring he was taken down, and fast. Oh, you talking about P. Diddy? Yeah, in the same, Yeah, bro. man, yeah, that's how low the news. I see, we see that, we watch that. And what's crazy is, what you know, I know, you know, because we just been in the very forever. When it comes to Hollywood BFFs, Oprah Winfrey and Gail King are at the top of the list. These two have been thick as thieves for decades, riding the highs and lows together like true besties. Some people find their friendship super sweet, while others can't help but wonder if there's more to the story. But one thing's for sure, these two are unbreakable. So how did they become besties? Flashback to 1976, Oprah was an anchor at a Baltimore news station when a snowstorm rolled through. Gail, who was just starting out as a production assistant at the same station, faced a sketchy 45-minute drive home. Oprah being, well, Oprah didn't even hesitate. She invited Gail to crash at her place. They weren't close yet, but Oprah has always been that kind of person. That night, they stayed up talking for hours, getting to know each other. And when Gail realized she had no clothes to wear, Oprah shrugged it off and said, Girl, just wear mine. From the jump, they just clicked. In an interview with Oprah Magazine, Gail said meeting Oprah was like finding someone who finally got her. Growing up in an all-white community, Gail always felt a bit out of place. Oprah could totally relate. They bonded over the same music, too. Gail was all about Barry Manilow, and Oprah was a big Neil Diamond fan. Gail put it perfectly. It's that whole odd girl out thing. We didn't fit into what people expected black girls to be. Oprah's early life wasn't easy. She bounced between her grandmother, mom, and dad's homes, always craving attention and love but rarely getting it. Her mom worked long hours as a maid, which left Oprah feeling pretty neglected. When she met Gail, it was like she'd finally found someone who filled that missing piece. And the rest, as they say, is history. Is the sister everybody would want. She is the friend that everybody deserves. 
After discovering her husband, William Bumpus, in bed with another woman, Gail filed for divorce and began the journey of healing herself while preparing to raise her two children, Kirby and William Jr., as a single parent. When asked by Vanity Fair to name the person she despises the most, Gail replied that she wasn't a huge fan of the woman she caught with her ex-husband on June 24, 1990, at 9.16pm, although she didn't remember the details. Gail's divorce was finalized in 1993, and as the holidays approached, she faced spending New Year's Eve without her children for the first time. She called Oprah and shared her feelings. Oprah, being the supportive friend she is, wasn't about to let her bestie feel down. Just four hours after their phone call, Oprah showed up at Gail's doorstep with a bag full of groceries, accompanied by Stedman. Stedman then whipped up some spaghetti, and they rang in the new year together, showing the true strength of their friendship and support for each other during tough times. Gail told People Magazine that she was incredibly grateful to have Oprah and Stedman with her during that difficult time, and it's a memory she will cherish forever. Gail has shown that she will drop everything to be there for Oprah too. Oprah shared with People Magazine that one day she was feeling really down because she had been betrayed by someone. When Gail heard the disappointment in Oprah's voice during one of their phone calls, Gail immediately hung up, told her babysitter to watch her children, and hopped on a plane from Connecticut to Oprah's home in Chicago. When Oprah opened the door and saw Gail on her doorstep, Gail simply said, I can't stay but I just wanted to see your face. After ensuring that Oprah was okay, Gail drank a glass of water and promptly headed back to the airport to return home to her children so you can kind of guess how tight their friendship is. Because of this strange bond they share, a lot of people have speculated that their relationship might be more than just friendship. Oprah has even given her many lavish gifts, like a fancy house in Manhattan. Interestingly, Oprah, despite her immense wealth, can relate to the money struggles faced by black actors in Hollywood. In a Deck 19 interview with Oprah Daily alongside her bestie Gail King, Oprah revealed that she received only $35,000 for her role as Sophia in the original The Color Purple. She emphasized that she would have taken on the role for nothing, highlighting a shared understanding of the financial challenges within the industry. That's how you know you really love something when you would do it even if nobody was paying. Fans are starting to wonder if Gail picks and chooses her targets, not based on journalistic integrity but on who she can or can't upset. Take Diddy, for example. Over the years, Diddy's name has been linked to several troubling allegations, yet Gail hasn't said a word. No probing interview, no segment dissecting the rumors, nothing. This pattern raises eyebrows, especially since Diddy and Oprah move in the same circles. Could it be that Gail is intentionally steering clear of stories that could disrupt Oprah's relationships with these A-listers? Gail King's deafening silence around Diddy becomes even more suspicious in light of recent events. In an explosive episode of Piers Morgan Uncensored, titled, Diddy Has Tapes on Everyone, Candace Owens vs. Mark Lamont Hill, new allegations about the rap mogul's influence shook the public. With the messy, tangled web of power, silence, and secret secrets in Hollywood unraveling, Candace Owens didn't mince words. She suggested that Diddy has been strategically silencing people for years, hinting that the entertainment industry's elite, including figures like Gail, know far more than they let on. And yet, Gail, a journalist known for her bold, tell-all interviews, has remained completely mute. That silence is starting to look deliberate. Brought up what was going on with him, and because I had read through the lawsuit, and it was just one of those things that was unavoidable because there was so much evidence. I mean, there was picture, documentation, documentation, there was video document. Owens made a sharp point. Powerful men like Diddy operate with impunity because they hold leverage over others, whether through secrets, incriminating information, or even tapes. Literal or not, the message is clear. No one dares challenge Diddy for fear of what he might expose. This is where Gail's selective journalism becomes suspect. Known for her hard-hitting interviews with controversial figures like R. Kelly, her sudden reluctance to confront Diddy raises questions. Where's the same intensity she brought when pushing Kelly to the brink of a public breakdown? press and the media and the public at large is is shocked by what's happening, but we really are just getting to the beginning of everything. And it's not just Diddy. Gail's decision not to press figures like Jay-Z, Usher, or Justin Bieber, each entangled in rumors or scandals, points to a larger pattern. What's really happening behind the scenes? Is Gail steering clear of topics that might disrupt her connection to Oprah's inner circle? Or is there something even more profound silencing her? Some fans now speculate that Diddy's influence extends far beyond the music industry and into the media itself. If he truly holds leverage over powerful individuals, could media figures like Gail also be under his thumb? Behind the scenes, everyone knew that this is what he was engaged in. This was an open secret in Hollywood. In fact, when Kanye last year said that he 
he was a Fed and started speaking about some of these allegations, he was- Mark Lamont Hill's take added another layer to the conversation, suggesting that Hollywood's silence isn't always deliberate. Sometimes people don't realize how complicit they've become until it's too late. This idea strikes a chord with the speculation surrounding Gail's behavior. Is she staying quiet to protect her career and relationships, or has she become so entrenched in the system that she can no longer recognize the problem? It raises an unsettling question. Is Gail shielding Diddy or herself? Adding to the controversy, Lord Jamar chimed in with a tangent about Kamala Harris's racial identity, highlighting how optics and loyalty are weaponized in politics and media. His argument circles back to Hollywood's elite, where loyalty often takes precedence over accountability. This further complicates Gail's silence on Diddy. Critics suggest her friendship with Oprah might have deterred her from asking tough questions of certain figures, while her allegiance to the network, or her brand, could now be preventing her from speaking out. This isn't just a case of journalism going soft. It's a story about power, race, and access. The speculation online has exploded. It's crazy. People at the upper echelons of society and politics knew about this and they were okay with it. Fundamentally because he was acting a part, I very much believe what Kanye alleged. That Some are saying Gail is avoiding the topic because Diddy's secrets are too dangerous, and even Oprah's influence might not be enough to shield her if she steps out of line. Others believe that Gail's silence is an intentional strategy, that she's waiting for the storm to pass before saying anything. But the longer she stays quiet, the worse it looks. If Diddy's empire is really starting to crumble, those who have stayed silent might soon find themselves under fire too. And Gail, with her high-profile role in history of strategic interviews, could end up being collateral damage. This also raises questions about CBS's stance. The network might not be able to afford this kind of controversy surrounding one of their top journalists. If the public starts believing Gail's silence is part of a cover-up, CBS could move swiftly to distance themselves from her. With 50 Cent stirring the pot and the revelations on Piers Morgan uncensored adding new layers to the drama, the heat is on Gail, and it's becoming harder to ignore. It never happens when your time like when you think you're ready like it's supposed to happen it always happens when it's supposed and kelly has also talked about diddy from the prison in a recent chat with whack 100 on clubhouse r kelly who's currently locked up for his heinous crimes decided to weigh in on sean diddy combs legal battles now kelly's no stranger to the courtroom himself he's serving a hefty sentence for a laundry list of awful stuff, including CS crimes. This guy's rap sheet is as long as a CVS receipt. He got 20 years in prison today. He will serve all but one of those years simultaneously with a 30-year sentence for racketeering and the judge ordered Remember that Kelly has been behind bars since 2022, first slapped with 30 years for racketeering and ST. Then, just to pile it on, he got another 20 years in 2023 for CP and luring young people. Talk about a double whammy. One of his biggest scandals was marrying Aaliyah when she was just a kid back in 94. Robert's doing his thing, I'm doing my thing. He's a great producer, great artist, who I do admire, and um, there's, there's nothing left in there at all. During the conversation, Kelly delved into the complexities of organizing events and advised celebrities about the possible legal risks stemming from misunderstandings or unfounded allegations of misconduct. The S is crazy. M out there laughing and making comedian jokes and doing all the other S on the radio and everything else. But they could be next, R. Kelly warned. That's what's so F up about. They so s they don't even realize the moves that's going on. I don't believe none any F Aaliyah which may have of this S. You could tell me about Puffy. You could about anybody. You could tell me on the news, the weather, the sky is blue. I'm not gonna believe the S, cause I'm in it now, and I know what they did. R. Kelly further conveyed his concerns about the changing societal norms that leave public figures vulnerable to extortion and false accusations regarding Diddy's ongoing legal troubles which involve a federal investigation into allegations of ST, including R, SA, and coercion of women and a young person. Kelly highlighted the broader issues and potential injustices within the justice system. Additionally, he expressed skepticism about the credibility of evidence and testimonies presented in his own trials, maintaining his innocence. On a plan to get you, or if it's a conspiracy, yeah. anything, they put you in cuffs, bro. <laughs> no, that's real. And I've been telling people, I've been preaching, I said, yo, one thing on it, talk. Not only R. Kelly, 
His legal team is also talking about Diddy. A person who is well versed in cases like this is R. Kelly's prosecutor Nadia Shihata, who recently appeared on News Nation to talk about the specifics of this case. She is the one who secured the 31-year jail sentence against R. Kelly. According to what Shihata says, Diddy's legal team is now only protected by the potential non-disclosure agreements that the rapper's alleged victims might have signed. In her experience, people who signed NDAs are generally reluctant to speak to authorities or investigators about anything related to the case. She said, Obviously taking an overt step in investigation of searching two homes means the investigation is well underway here. She continued, They clearly have probable cause to believe a federal crime has been committed, and that evidence of that crime or multiple crimes would be found in the two locations that they searched. So this is, this is big news. And if I'm P. Diddy or his lawyers, I'd be very concerned at this point. An NDA that when push comes to shove is not going to trump a grand jury subpoena or a federal agent or prosecutor asking you questions, but I wouldn't say that they are, that they have no effect. NDAs can make people very reluctant and hesitant to speak to law enforcement, so if it's someone that law enforcement is not already aware of, they may be wary to, you know, themselves contact law enforcement to provide information, and so they can still deter people in that sense. So there he is, chatting away about hosting shindigs and dropping advice for celebs about staying clear of legal trouble. If anyone knows about getting caught up in the legal mess, it's him. But fans believe that it is wild to hear him giving out pointers while he's locked up for some seriously messed up stuff. One person commented, R. Kelly, stay out this you already in hot water with your own situation. Another one added, right is right and wrong is wrong. We don't condone that you age ish. R. Kelly's known as a big time creep in the hip hop world, with all all those messed up stories about him being a SO and T. The bravery of the women who spoke out against him is just heroic, no doubt. But now, it looks like P. Diddy's in the same boat facing even worse accusations of ST, including some seriously disturbing stuff like T fitness influencers and even alleged P. This case is going to keep on unfolding for months, and who knows what we'll find out in the end. But in some cases, R. Kelly's and Diddy's are considered to have uncanny resemblances. But Gail's and Oprah's complete silence is telling a different story. All this shit, you gotta damn it get them. Turn on your camera. Let them tell you who they is. Put their ID up. Let them tell you where they at. But what if things aren't as black and white as they seem? Some insiders are starting to speculate that Gail King and Oprah, publicly distancing themselves from Kelly, may have actually been helping him behind the scenes. Think about it, their interview gave R. Kelly just enough space to plead his case to the public. The timing of it, right before his arrest, feels almost too convenient, like a calculated move to make him the scapegoat while bigger players stayed untouched. And let's not forget the Diddy connection. R. Kelly claims there's a hidden web of influence between these entertainment titans, and if the full truth ever got out, it could topple the reputations of some of the most powerful people in music. Could Gail and Oprah have been working as part of a strategy to keep Kelly quiet while throwing him under the bus to protect others? Or, plot twist, could they actually be making sure his voice stays alive from jail? giving him just enough rope to keep the right people nervous? Sean Carter is just as bad as the diddler. And I know that for a fact. I got the scars to prove it. Huh? Then there's the wildest theory. What if they're still secretly in contact with Kelly? Some believe Gail might have been a messenger between Kelly and Diddy, making sure no damning information about the music industry slips through the cracks. Maybe that explosive interview wasn't about justice at all. It was a warning, a signal to the world's most powerful players that Kelly knows too much. And here's where it gets even murkier. If Oprah and Gail were working behind the scenes to protect Kelly, or at least ensure certain names stayed out of his story, what does that say about their own positions in the industry? Are they really the truth tellers they claim to be? Or are they just two more chess pieces in the game, doing what they need to do to stay in good standing with the elite? Something feels off about all of this, and Kelly's hints from jail are only making things more suspicious. If these connections go as deep as he suggests, the fallout could be huge. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.